Hello guys, thank you for watching this video brought to you by Quadrivo. Today I'll be introducing our latest product offering, the Power OSD. The Power OSD is a mini distribution board with built-in OSD. The board is essentially the same form factor and size as many of the popular mini controllers that are used today on mini quads such as the Naze 32. Let's start by talking about the connections that are available on the board. You've got two headers, one used for the FPV camera and the other used for the video transmitter. On the video transmitter side, you've also got an RSSI input. And then adjacent to the headers, you've got two large pads. One labeled as ground, which you would use for soldering your ESC ground wires. And on the other side, you've got the ESC... Uh, positive pad where you solder up all of the uh, the positive um, leads of your ESCs or the the red wires and then those two large silver holes that you see are used for the battery terminal so the positive labeled hole is for the uh, for the positive battery uh, lead and then the negative one would be the the primary battery ground and that's it it's as simple as that Okay, the FPV screenshot that you see now gives you an example of what you should expect to see uh, while flying with this board. Right in the middle of the screen at the bottom you see the flight timer. Now this is an actual flight timer. The timer only runs while you're flying. Um, whenever you land it, it pauses and then you take off it, it runs again. And then on the left side of the screen at the bottom you see the real-time current usage out of the battery. Essentially how much uh, current your motors are pulling while you're flying. Um, on top of that, it's the the battery voltage. Um, this also ties into a low voltage alarm feature that's available on the board. Um, when you get to a low voltage, the board uh, will flash a, a low battery message um, warning you that you should prepare to land soon. Uh, there's also a secondary stage alarm. Say you don't notice the low voltage alarm uh, or you, you choose to ignore it, there's a critical battery alarm that will start flashing, letting you know that you're essentially about to crash. So uh, um, get ready for that. And then on the bottom right, um, it's the uh, battery usage meter. So um, how many um, milliamp hours you've consumed um, out of your battery um, on this flight. And then if you happen to be using the RSSI input, um, if you've got a uh, an RC receiver that has DC RSSI output um, connected to the board, then right on top of the battery usage meter, uh, you'll see another um, OSD parameter that, that pops up showing you a percentage value of how strong your RC signal is. Um, now in this particular example here I was not using the RSSI and if you're not using it it drops off the screen it doesn't even show up. When you power up the board during the boot up sequence the, the board will actually figure out whether you're using RSSI or not and, and if you are it will auto calibrate. Um, and then you'll see the OSD parameter. Again, if you're, if you're not using it, it's, it, it, it's not going to clutter up your screen and you're not going to see it on there. Okay, now let's do a quick walkthrough on how you'd actually install and uh, solder up this board. Um, the intention behind this is to show you how easy the installation process is. So this is how your board should look like once you receive it. Um, there may be some, some variation. This is a pre-production unit, um, but it'll be very similar to this. Here's uh, the negative terminal where you'd install the uh, negative uh, wire going to your battery and the other side is the positive terminal. Here we've got the ground pad for the ESCs as well as the positive pad for the ESCs. Um, this side we've got the camera connection for um, FPV, the other side is the transmitter. Um, the middle is the positive lead, this one is the actual video lead and it says VTX right next to it and then the other side would be ground. This is the optional RSSI input pin and similarly on the other side the first pin over here is ground, middle is positive and the last is the video uh, for the camera. Again here's the positive pad for the ESCs and then the ground pads. Now the battery terminals are labeled positive and negative. Make sure you don't uh, mix those up. Okay. Here we'll use an example frame to mount the board. Um, here we're actually using the Quadrivo FR1 Racer, which is a, another pre-production unit that's going to be releasing soon. I had a pre-made battery lead that I'm going to be uh, using here as an example. First we'll install the, uh, the positive end. So we'll solder that guy up in there. And then we've got the ground.
Okay, now let's install the ESCs. We'll add a little bit of solder to the pad. It's always a good idea to use a high performance hot soldering iron when you do this so you don't uh, get things too hot outside of the area that you're trying to solder. We'll do lead number one, two, three, and then the fourth ESC. Again, this is this installation is on a quad. If it was a hex, then you'd obviously have six of these. And then now we'll work on the other side. Again, we'll add a little bit of solder. And then we've got the first ground, second ESC, and then third, and lastly fourth. Okay. Next, we'll plug in the camera and the uh, the video transmitter. So first, we'll start with the uh, video transmitter lead. Here, you can see the black wire going to the ground. Middle red wire is positive, and then the last orange is the video. And same thing on the other side for the camera. Again, pay attention to polarity. Okay, and essentially that's it. It's done. Next, uh, you stack up uh, right on top your favorite board of choice. Here, we've got an example showing the Nace 32. And here's the uh, multi wee flipboard. That's it. Installation's done. Okay, next let's take a look at an actual uh, flight. Plug in the board, it powers up. Here's how the, uh, the, the first screen would look like. This is the uh, power on sequence where the board will auto detect whether you're using RSSI and whether you're on 3S or 4S battery. If you notice, the timer is stopped until you actually fly. Once we take off for hovering, you can see the timer has started. and then we land, it stops. This is great for racing, so you can keep track of exactly how long um, your flight times are. Okay, let's take off again. And this is just uh, some, some basic flying around to give you an idea of how the OSD looks like while it's in operation. Here you can see the, uh, the voltage running, the current, timer, and the uh, battery usage. Again, RSSI is not shown um, because I happen not to be uh, using it. Current capacity on the board is 100 amps for those guys that are using uh, super power setups. Okay, we'll fast forward uh, this flight a bunch. I'd like to show you guys um, the uh, low battery alarm when it kicks in. So the low battery um, does take into account internal resistance of the battery. Okay, and here you see the uh, low battery indicator warning you that it's, it's time to land. And second stage has kicked in since I'm ignoring it and now we're getting a critical battery letting us know that we've uh, fallen into critical levels and now we come back and land and again as soon as I land you could see that the timer stopped okay that's all I had for you guys today uh, thanks a lot for watching till next time bye bye